Cool. I'm Ginny Metherill. I'm a fourth generation Irish witch and I'm here today to talk to you about the case of the haunted painting. This is a true scary story that happened to me and my family about, well how old are my children, about eight, nine years ago. But before we get into this video, I'd be really, really happy if you would subscribe to my channel because then I can tell you lots more school true, even scary horror stories that happened to me because I've got masses of them. I think that's something to do with being psychic. Things happen to you. Anyway, please subscribe and press that notification bell and that like button thing and then we're all done. So as I said earlier, this happened to us about eight, nine years ago when my family were quite small. So they were all under five, the three kids. So happily, it didn't really affect them, which is a good thing. Um, at the time, my, my family were living in an old Devon Cobb longhouse. Now, Cobb is what the, what the house was made of, which is basically mud and straw. So it had really thick walls, but it was one of those houses that you walked into it and you felt happy. It was a calm and loving house and we loved living there. So it was at this time that my grandmother very sadly passed away, although I mean, she was 97, so it wasn't unexpected. And she had very kindly left each of her 17 grandchildren, she had an awful lot, 350 pounds each in her will. And this money was obviously bequeathed to me and it wasn't enough for me to take my family away on holiday, which is what I like to do with any windfalls that I get, but 350 quid, you know, it gets you half a day, so <laughs> we couldn't go anywhere. Um, so I decided that it would be nice to buy a picture in memorial of my grandmother. Now my grandmother was a very religious Irish Catholic uh, and she spent her time praying lots and wearing rosaries, going to church and generally being actually a very kind, very loving and very decent person. Anyway, so I thought it would be nice for me to buy something that could remind me of my grandmother every time I looked at it. And so casting around in my mind about what I'd like to go, go for, I thought a picture would be the, you know, the very thing. So. I live in Devon. There is no shops in Devon. Well, not where I live anyway, not without driving at least 40 minutes. And, um, well, unless you want to go to Morrison's or Tesco's, which are really boring and don't really sell the sort of things that I was hoping for. So I cast about on the internet and the Bay of E, as we call it in our house, came up trumps. So the picture that I lighted upon was a painting uh, from the 1500s, so very old, the Madonna and Child. And it was a copy of a Renaissance painting from the 1400s of the Madonna and Child. And I can sh can't show you the picture that I've got, but I can show you the painting it was a copy of. So it's painted by the very famous Renaissance painter, this particular one that we're looking at now, uh, Domenico Ghirlandio, or Ghirlandio, I'm not quite sure how you pronounce it, so do forgive me on that one. And he was considered such a master of his art that students used to copy them. And especially in the 1500s, if you were an artist worth your salt, you would copy an old master to learn their tricks and traits. And this is what my picture was. So although it was from the 1500s, it was a copy of a picture from the 1400s, if you get my gist. So my picture wasn't quite as bright as the one we're looking at. It hadn't been restored and the oil was quite black and dark in places. And it wasn't quite as well painted, obviously, because this one is by the old master. My faces weren't quite as naturalistic, shall we say. They weren't quite as well detailed, although it was a fair copy, you know, it really was. And I was very pleased because I bought it for the 350 pounds that my grandmother had left me. And I thought it would make a perfect memorial to my grandmother. So I got it home um, and I unwrapped it and was admiring it. And I remember Jim, my husband, coming in and just looking at it and going, what in God's name is that? And we go, well, it's my lovely painting, which I bought in memorial of my grandmother. And Jim just looking at me going, oh, whatever. Anyway, I ignored him, as wives are wont to do with their husbands, and hung the picture on my bedroom wall. I was pottering around in my bedroom and where I'd hung the picture and having a very nice time on my own, which is you know quite difficult when you've got three small children under five in your house. And when I suddenly heard a crash, which made me jump. And I turned around and the picture had fallen off the wall. 
Now, in England, it's a really old tradition that should a picture fall from your wall, it is the sign of an impending death. I'm not particularly, in fact, I'm not superstitious at all nowadays, but in those days I was mildly superstitious. And so I, and I cursed the cob walls of my house because, you know, they don't hold nails very well. If you stick nails into some mud, it doesn't really hold. Um, and hung the picture back up again, bang the nail in a bit harder and slightly thought, oh, okay, all right. Oh, well, I'll just ignore that and carry on. That night, we all went to bed as per normal and passed out as we all did when you've got three small children any chance of sleeping you're out of the light there's no insomnia in your household then so we all went to sleep and then at three o'clock in the morning I awoke now I'd hung the picture on this wall at the side of the bed so that when I was lying in my bed asleep I could you know away from turning away from the middle I could open my eyes and see the picture however I found this a bit odd because at three o'clock in the morning I woke up and I, I, it was almost as if I'd woken up already with my eyes open, staring at the picture, just looking at it. And I sort of thought, well, why am I looking at this picture? I didn't think anything of it, rolled over, went to sleep. The next day, so this is day two, we got a phone call and very, very tragically, Jim's oldest and one of his greatest friends had been brutally killed by a rogue elephant and he had heroically led the elephant away from a bunch of children who'd been on safari and he was helping them out there. And the elephant turned on him and killed him. So we encouraged Jim to go to his friend's funeral in Africa. And the next day he got on a plane and left. Now in the back of my mind, there was this slight thought, well, that picture fell off the wall and pictures falling off the wall are a sign of impending death. And I remember thinking, oh, stupid, stupid, coincidence, coincidence. So it was while Jim was in Africa that I began to feel a little unwell. Um, really very unwell, actually. I was fainting a lot. I couldn't really um, look after the children very well. And so I went to my GP and said, you know, I'm suffering all these sort of rather weird symptoms. You know, I wasn't... I didn't know what was wrong with me. And the GP was like, oh, I don't know what's wrong with you either. A lot of head scratching. And so he referred me to the consultants at the hospital for them to do some further investigation. In the meantime, he gave me some pills and said these might help, which they didn't. I ate them like Smarties and absolutely not a bean. So as you do when you're not very well and there's not much you can do about it, you sort of just carry on, don't you? <laughs> Soldier on. So that is what I did. So while all this is going on, I kept on finding that at night, between 3 and 3.30 a.m., pretty much most nights, I would wake up and I would find myself with my eyes open staring at the picture of the Madonna and Child. Now, I wasn't really scared by this. I was just a little, always a bit unnerved. But I just think, well, why am I staring at this picture and literally just turn over and go back straight back to sleep? So, you know, it didn't really bother me. It just found it a little strange. Anyway. Jim then returns from his um, um, African trip to say goodbye to his friend and he's naturally you know, very devastated. And when he returns, he also starts to feel a little unwell and has some very bizarre symptoms. Um, so he goes to his GP and says, I've got these really strange symptoms. And the GP goes, well, I don't know what they are and scratches his head and so refers him on to the consultants at the hospital to have a look and do further tests and analysis. He comes back and, you know, both he and I are really fairly dreadful. Luckily, our children are all fine, but myself and my husband are not. So while all this is going on, again, I'm still waking up at night and staring at this picture, and this is getting more and more unnerving, and I'm thinking it's more and more a bit strange. I mean, to be fair, I just roll straight over and go to sleep, so I'm not necessarily scared. However, a friend of mine rings me up to find out how I'm doing, because I'm still quite unwell and <laughs> fainting quite a lot everywhere. It's not going well in our household. And then mention that I keep waking up at three o'clock in the morning and looking at this picture. This friend of mine turns around and says, Ginny, for goodness sake, 
just rehang it, hang it somewhere else. It's not normal that you wake up and stare at something in the middle of the night and that it unnerves you. And if it does, just hang it somewhere else. And I think a really good idea. So I take the picture down from our bedroom, which is at one end of the house. And there's a nice long corridor where the spare room is at the very other end of the house. And I hang it in the spare room. I mean, I didn't want to get rid of the picture because it did have sentimental value still to me. I bought it with the money that my grandmother had left me. And so I wanted it as a memorial to her. So I didn't want to get rid of it. That night, I also, again, awake at three o'clock in the morning. However, this time, I'm not in my bedroom. I find that I've slept walked and I am standing in front of the Madonna and Child picture in the spare room. Things meanwhile weren't really going very well in our house. Um, Jim had been referred to the hospital. His hospital test results had come through negative on what they thought it might be. And so the doctor had now said to him, we're going to refer you to the oncology unit um, because we think it could be a form of cancer, no sign of cancer. So Jim's been referred to the cancer unit. Um, I still haven't got any further towards a diagnosis. My consultant that I was seeing had turned around and said, well, I think it must be psychosomatic because I can't think of anything else. Things get a little worse is that a couple of days later, we receive a letter announcing that the company which had been handling our pension, both myself and my husband's pension, had folded and the pension was no longer there. So we'd both of us lost our life savings, our future pension, our health, and Jim's lost someone who he loved very dearly. Things are not happy in our household. It was quite a difficult blow to deal with over a period of about two weeks. That weekend, however, I had one of our oldest friends, a girl called Sophie, who's a very forthright Scotch girl, come and stay. Sophie came to stay, she was on there on the Friday night. We had got a bit merry, had quite a lot of drinks, went to bed quite late. I had to get up really early because I have five million children. And I was pottering around in the morning with slightly like, holding my head going, oh God, it hurts quite a lot, looking after the kids. And Sophie gets up and she gets up quite early for her at the weekend. And she comes downstairs. And the first thing she says to me is, what in God's name is that? bloody picture on the wall. It gave me nightmares all night. I couldn't sleep. I kept on staring at it. It is absolutely dreadful. I refused to sleep with it. Not even in that bedroom. In this house. You've got to get rid of it. And having gone on and on and on about it, I suddenly thought, hold on. This is so, she's normal. She's not like me, you know. <laughs> she's a normal person. And so I told her, I was saying, well, I think there might be something a bit weird about that picture. And I told her what had been going on, you know, the waking up, the sleepwalking into her bedroom, spare room, the, you know, the health issues and then the pension fund going and the terrible, terrible disaster and tragedy of Jim's great friend dying. You know, so she's appalled at the story and appalled at, you know, she'd heard a bit last the night before about uh, oh, health issues and you know, losing the pension and Jim's friend dying. And, and then I said, well, I think it you know, also started happening as soon as the picture arrived in our house. And so it's got really on to me then. She said, right, that's it. Call up Sotheby's and see if they've got any valuation days. You're taking that picture, get rid of it. You cannot keep it, it's not good. And I thought, do you know what? She's right. So we went and got the picture, we took it down, we took it out of the house and we kept it in the barn. And then we came back and we went on the internet and Sotheby's happened to have a valuation day in Exeter that Monday morning. And I thought, perfect, it's Monday morning at 10 o'clock. I've got a doctor's appointment at two o'clock and um, I can take it in, get it valued, get rid of it. And you know, that'll do. So Monday morning turns around and I take the picture into Sotheby's and there's this very nice man behind the counter. He looks at it and says, oh yes, Domenico Ghirlandaio. It's a very fine Madonna and Child copy, blah, blah, blah. Why do you want to sell it? And I was so sort of distressed by all that had been going on. I turned around and said, I think it's haunted. And he looked at me and instead of going, this mad woman who's come into my thing with a haunted picture, 
I said, uh, you know, these things happen. I've had so many situations where I've gone into somebody's house and all the clocks have stopped the moment they died. I know that there is something going on and can go on in these situations. So I don't blame you for getting rid of it. So I gave him the picture. I come back from the valuation, I've got a doctor's appointment and I go to the doctor's appointment and the doctor says, oh, we've got um, uh, some news. They found out what's wrong with me. And it's a really simple thing, which he gives me some pills for a few weeks and then I recover. And literally, I recover like that. I come home and I'm feeling quite pleased with myself. I've got rid of the picture. You know, I've got some new pills that have helped my situation, stopped me fainting. I'm going to feel great. And then Jim comes back because he's been at the consultants in Exeter. And he comes back and says, I just had all my test results from the cancer tests. And they're all negative. The doctors are convinced that I must have just picked something up in Africa and it will go away. Jim's symptoms never came back after that day. He was completely free of them from that Monday. Now, is this a coincidence? We never got the money back and someone died, but we got our health back. And I stopped sleepwalking at three o'clock in the morning or sleep opening my eyes or sleep staring or whatever I was doing. I don't know if the painting is haunted or cursed or whatever. And I don't have it anymore. And I didn't ever have a, I don't even have a picture of it to show you because it's, actually it was too scary now. But is it coincidence? I'd love to know what you think. Let me know in the comments down below. So if you've liked this video and enjoyed this story, do let me know in the comments below and subscribe to my channel because then I can make some more stories for you. And I soon I'll have so many subscribers that I'll be able to buy a jumper with that hole in it. Brilliant. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.